Aiden, thanks for being here. Um, this town seems like crazy divided. Is that an assessment that's accurate? I wouldn't even say it's divided. A lot of people say that. But when I go into Canton and I hold peaceful protests outside of Chris Albert's pizza shop on the busiest street in town, all I get are honks, people screaming, uh, free Cameron Reed, we support Turtle Boy. So I think it's kind of a misnomer that uh, the, the town is divided. There's like 50 McAlberts and then everybody else who knows that John O'Keefe was murdered inside 34 Fairview Road by the Alberts and left out to die and that Karen Reed was framed. This is a fact, not an opinion. It happened. The, the evidence is undeniable that shows that. Well, and I just, for the purposes of this program, have to say that's an allegation that has not been proven, and yet Karen is, is on trial. Um, I do want to ask you this. Why do you think that the police, you know, came after you and charged you with witness intimidation, among other things? Like, they really threw the book at you, and I think you were even incarcerated for a while and had to wear an ankle monitor, um, based on your protests and your efforts to um, show people other sides of the evidence. Because I'm too effective. The journalism is too effective that we've been doing here. We've uncovered things that the uh, police have attempted to hide. For instance, they attempted to hide the identity of the plow driver. They they lied in their reports and said that Fairview Road was not plowed that night. I went down and tracked down the plow driver myself, Lucky Lochran, who told me that there was nobody on the lawn of 34 Fairview Road when he went by at 2.30, which means that Karen Reed could not have hit him at 12.30. He also told me that he had spoken with the FBI about this already and that there was a Ford Edge parked right next to where the body was found three hours later at 3 a.m. Three members of the Albert family own a Ford Edge. I'm asking questions like that. I'm tracking down people involved in this case. I'm doing the work that the state police are intentionally covering up. And for that reason, the same corrupt cops who I've been exposing filed these bogus witness intimidation charges against me, which is nothing more than legally protected constitutional speech, which journalists have been doing for decades. And they have weaponized this. Go ahead. Yeah, I've, got, I've only got like 30 seconds left, but I got to ask you this. Some of the injuries are very weird. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe has injuries sort of above the, the neck and shoulders, which maybe doesn't jive with being hit by a car. He's got a gash in the back of his head, which would be a lot of blood, yet not a lot of blood found at the scene. He's got what looks like dog bites on his arm. And I understand the, the, the house, uh, there was a dog that, that lived in that house. All of this, um, as the FBI is investigating the investigators, again, about 20 seconds left, has the FBI approached you and asked what you've been able to dig up? Our attorneys have spoken with the FBI about both my case and the Reed case and, and ways in which they're connected. Uh, the FBI knows oh, that John okay. O'Keefe was not killed inside that house. Uh, I mean, was not killed outside the house, that he was killed inside the house, that he was inside the house, that his Apple Health data shows him going up and down three flights of stairs uh, okay. while he was inside that house. So they absolutely know. They have convened a federal grand jury. That's fascinating. And, yes, in due time, the, the people I, I'm just, who are responsible. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.